I have to start out this video by saying this is a big video. You guys have no idea how excited I am about it and I bet you guys are going to be just as excited after I explain why. So let me explain first. Of course, we're all looking for those high-end looks, those high dollar items without the huge expensive price tag. And in today's video, I have three Pottery Barn dupes. So I'm going to show you how to get that high-end look without breaking the bank. And next, let me blow your mind just a little bit. I have teamed up with Megan from Glue Guns and Roses. If you guys don't know who she is, please go check her out. Not only is Megan a wonderful, wonderful person, she has the most creative imagination and she is an expert at these high-end, high-dollar DIYs. Once you have watched my Pottery Barn Dupes video, please head over to Megan's channel, Blue Guns and Roses. She's also doing a $5 and under DIY challenge. Leave her a little sunshine emoji so she knows that you came from my channel. I'll make sure to link her video down in the description box as well. Let's go ahead and jump right into these Pottery Barn dupes. If you're joining me from Megan's channel or you are new, I wanted to say hello and welcome. I am so, so glad to have you here today. This very first DIY and Pottery Barn dupe, I'm going to save you $70 or more right off the bat. We're going to be making a wooden terrarium using these paint stir sticks that I get off of Amazon. I'll link those down in the description box, as well as a hand saw and a miter box. I have two picture frames here from the Dollar tree. They're both five by seven size and you'll need a ruler, a pencil, and a hot glue gun. I'm starting by measuring my picture frame for sizing and cutting all my pieces down to size. If you're going to be using a five by seven size picture frame, you will need eight, eight and a half inch long stir sticks as well as two and five and a quarter inch size. Six of your longer sticks are going to be your bottom, so I used some scrap pieces to brace the back. Then I flipped it over and hot glued on the front and back pieces, and next you will hot glue on the sides. Now I definitely used a lot of hot glue to keep all of this together. I don't think you can go too crazy or too overboard as long as you keep all of that hot glue on the bottom to where you really can't see it and try not to put any on the front where you will see the glue showing through the creases in the seams. You can see here, this is more of a close up look of where I added that extra hot glue. And here's the front and you actually cannot see most of the glue, which is really, really nice. I then took my frames apart. You wanna take the glass and the backs off. We're just gonna be using the frames and we're gonna be painting them with this chalk paint. I love doing this technique. It's kind of a weathered wood look. So I gave every piece a coat of the gray chalk paint to start with. I did the fronts and the backs of everything since you're going to see inside this terrarium. Once that first layer of gray paint was dry, I then added my white chalk paint and for this step I like to sparingly just brush it on so you can still see some of that gray popping through the paint. You can add a couple layers of this and give it even more dimension which is what I usually do. Here I flipped over the picture frames and took all the metal pieces out and repeated the painting process so that it would look pretty on the inside too. Once the paint is dry, you can add hot glue to the front side and back side of the tray. Put your frames in place and then make sure to use lots of hot glue in the middle at the peak where your frames meet. Now I didn't have any closures on hand, but I did have these cute metal decorative corner pieces. And also this is rub and buff. You just add a little bit to a paper towel and buff it into decorative pieces like this metal corner. I just featured this in my favorites list and I will link that up in the iCards. And basically you can see the difference, how much more character it kind of gives these pieces. And then I just hot glued that onto the front. And even though it's not a real closure, and you don't need it because you can stick your hand right through the front of the frame or the back or the sides. It just adds that extra little piece of decorative touch and kind of gives the idea that there could be a metal closure there. I just think it's really, really pretty. It adds to the dimension of the piece and really kind of ties in some of the metal in the room too. I'm 
I love candle holders and these were so pretty from Pottery Barn. They had a pretty hefty price tag on them though. So I'm going to be using some vases from Dollar Tree along with some frosted glass spray paint. I have two colors of acrylic paint which I will talk about in just a little bit. And you'll also need some foam paint brushes and some painter's tape for this. So I started by going down to the basement and spray painting the vases with the frosted spray paint. I did give these two coats, letting them dry in between coats before returning them back to my studio so that I could really decorate them up. You do want to make sure that your spray paint is completely dry before you move on to this next step. Unfortunately, my battery died on my camera during this step, so you kind of get the idea that I just added painter's tape around the bottom, and then I gave it two coats of this King Gold acrylic paint. And then I added the traditional burnt umber acrylic paint over the top of this. This is basically going to give us that faux wood look. So the first layer may not look very much like wood. You can see here, this is the very first layer, but after the second layer, you finally get that wood grain and dark toned look. Once the acrylic paint is dry, then you can remove your painter's tape really, really carefully. You don't wanna peel off any of that paint. And then you're left with these gorgeous luminaries. You could use these for candles like I have shown here, or you could even use them as vases and add flowers and group many of them together. So lots of different options. This next DIY is a picture frame that I couldn't believe was $40 for one. So we're gonna make one using another one of Dollar Tree's picture frames. You're gonna need some hot glue, some twine, and some scissors. Now I will say if I was able to get out of quarantine and go to Dollar Tree, I would have gotten one of their frameless picture frames that is just glass. And I probably would have used nylon cord for this instead of jute. And I probably would have gotten a better end result. I'm not unhappy with the end result. I still think it's really, really pretty. I just basically wrapped the jute around and around and hot glued it around the frame. So you can see here, there's kind of some fraying on the jute, which is natural for this product, which is why I think uh, the nylon cord would have worked better. Then you want to take your glass out of the frame. I took it down to my workshop and started with this Rust-Oleum metallic gold spray paint. I wasn't really happy with the result and I'd love to hear down in the comments what is your favorite gold spray paint because there are good ones and there are bad ones and I was definitely not happy with this one. I had a favorite one. I couldn't remember what it was. So instead I tried this one by Krylon. It is a brilliant gold and it did a much better job, but I still don't think that it's my favorite go-to spray paint. So I'd love to hear down in the comments which gold you usually use for your DIY. These are some of my favorite DIYs so far. I love creating high-end decor while still staying on a budget. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see even more $5 and under DIYs, please go ahead over to Megan at the Glue Guns and Roses channel. I will link that down in the description box below. You will not be disappointed by all of the inspiration that you'll find there. I also hope you will hit that subscribe button because you'll find new DIYs and inspiration right here every single week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.